marbles now. Danny McKeever is our umpire. I'm your referee today. Clock is official. LaSalle, you're the visiting team here. Uh, Washington, you're home. We're going to flip the coin as we've done. Heads. Nails. And Washington. LaSalle won the toss. They're going to receive. Let's turn that way. LaSalle wins the toss. So the Explorers he likes to receive. will get the ball first Washington, to kick. start this game. You can feel the hype in the air set to kick off for George Washington. Will McFillin back deep for the Explorers. Jamal Abdul Rockmine and Sam Felicia. Short kickoff. Fielded by Felicia. Not going anywhere for a while. Grab a Snickers. Great coverage by George Washington. Well, that's where you set the tempo in any game with special teams. Talking to the teams, set your hair on fire, cause a wreck. And uh, not bad starting position, but uh, not what they were looking for. The kick uh, being short was very effective. The Explorers begin their first but, uh, drive not at what the they 20. Were looking for. The kick uh, being short was very effective. The Explorers. Begin their first drive at the 20. Quarterback Drew Lockery under center. Begin their first drive at the 20. Quarterback Drew Lockery under center. Receivers split to either side. First down, the pass dropped by Sam Felicia. Yeah, normally Felicia doesn't drop too many passes. 6'2, 210 pound junior. Pass. And uh, a lot of receptions this year. It's going to be as tough yeah, for the receivers as it is for the quarterbacks passes, six, two, because two, the wind's going to be yeah. bouncing that ball and around. They've uh, really got to concentrate. This year. It's going to be as tough yeah, for the receivers as it is for the quarterbacks because the wind's going to be bouncing that ball around. They've really got to concentrate. He wasn't going very far. Second and ten for the Explorers. He wasn't going very Backs in the eye formation. Mike Donahue with the catch on the rollout from Lockery goes for around seven yards, bringing up a third and three bits. Yeah, they like to run uh, Donahue out there in that little swing out, and uh, he had a couple really key touchdown uh, catches last week. Uh, he got sure hands, uh, a real tough full, uh, fullback as well. Touchdown uh, catches last week. Uh, he got sure hands, uh, a real tough full, uh, fullback as well. The Eagles bring a lot of guys up in the box for this third down play. The pass is complete from Lockery to Connor Hoffman. That will be good enough for an Explorer's first down. Yeah, Connor Hoffman running that run, quick uh, out and uh, a little, little waggle pass there by the quarterback, Drew Lockery. Tremendous delivery of the ball, good concentration, first down. What does it tell you that the Explorers have opened up with pass plays on two of their first three plays. They're telling us that the wind's not going to affect them whatsoever. It's in your face, and we're going to do anything we can. The Explorers rely on execution. They're telling us that the wind's not going to affect them whatsoever. It's in your face, and we're going to do anything we can. The Explorers rely on execution. They say they're not bigger, they're not faster on that first down handoff. Abdul Rahman plows ahead for just about a yard. Rockman close to a thousand yards in rushing this year. He's not real big, but he's explosive. Very quick sophomore, 160, gets that one on the counter. Before the game began, his younger brother came up to the booth and said, "You know how to pronounce my brother's name, right?" <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, Abdur Rockman." He was like, Before "Yeah, make sure began, Rockman." He's his a rock man for came sure. Up to the booth and said, you know because my brother is going to do a lot of work, and I don't <laughs> want you to mess his name up. He is the explosion in the Explorers offense. Second and nine. Lockery back to pass. Incomplete. Sam Felicia there on that's that. That's his second yeah. drop. Yeah, that's his second drop. You know, and, and I wouldn't say that's on him. That's pretty much on the win. He went a fantastic Sam route. Felicia there on that's that. his second drop. Route. Yeah, that's went his second about drop. You know, and I wouldn't say that's on him. With, he came that's back pretty much on the win. Two out of three wasn't bad, but he left the ball on the ground. So we got that drop. Yeah, that's my second about drop. You know, and, and One thing we can tell early, the Eagles, despite not facing an offense like this, don't appear to be that far away from the receivers. They have a good defensive game plan so far. They'll be pressing. They're pressing man-to-man right now. Despite not facing an offense like this, don't appear to be that far away from the receivers. 
receiver. One thing we they have a good early. defensive game plan so far. On third down, Lockery on the roll. He didn't need a comb. He did not need that pick. Jamal Williams with the interception. GW takes over, Vince. Three interceptions this year for Williams, a six-foot senior. Uh, he was just playing center field. He's the free safety. That's what he's supposed to do. The wind held the ball up a little bit. The quarterback trying to throw against his body and coming back with the ball. So you can see right now, Williams, he just slanted and cut right in front of the ball. The ball is intended for the big guy, number seven. Tremendous play. And now the George Washington Eagles go on offense with the first takeaway of this city championship game. Aaron Wilmer with the handoff. Up the middle, the play goes for around Aaron Wilmer. Three or four yards, the handoff. We yeah. know George Washington likes to run. Uh, don't they, though? And they like running with Kassan Christopher, the guy who just had the ball right now. That's just strict power. Um, he's a 180-pound junior. Keep an eye on number 73, offensive lineman Sharif Floyd. The GW coaching staff says he will move the pile all game long as he has all season. Straight handoff. Once again, Kyle Glenn, where you going? To the house. Just like that, GW takes command of this city championship game. Well, at number five for Kyle Glenn and his touchdowns this year, what made that play was his, his, his good feet. He bounced off. There was a little jam right in front. He just moved to the outside. He got a great block downfield by one of his wide receivers. That's why wide receivers got a block. Here it is. Look for the block downfield. And Glenn into the end zone for his fourth touchdown of the year. GW showing that power running game that led them to a season where they only lost one game, and that was to Central Bucks East earlier in the season. GW with two big plays, the takeaway, then the touchdown run, Vince. They've taken control of this game, a game no one really gave them a shot to win outside of themselves. Yeah, well, turnovers will kill you, and that's a good indication of what it's about. You know, and once again, don't take George Washington lightly. They were ready to play today. And not ready on this extra point. They had to take a timeout prior to this extra point. So your score, George Washington leading LaSalle 6-0, just under 10 minutes left wow. in the first quarter. That's very rare when you have to take a timeout. Yeah, that's just a yeah, mess, I saw up, it start to mess move up a little on bit. special teams. You know, you, <laughs> I guess we got to go with our officials today. We got a referee, Tommy McLean. Tommy McLean, by the way, was one of the guys who was in Invincible. Umpire Dan McKeever, line judge Frank, Frank Powers, side judge Art uh, Chapman. Hold it, hold it. Field judge Jim Reef and back judge Ernie Gallagher. Well, Gallagher. Well, they got everything in place right now, so let's hope that uh, Will McPhillan, one of the captains for the team, is going to be able to drill it through. He's got 30 points after touchdowns this year, one of their top scorers. And here is McPhillan lining up the extra point, trying to give GW a 7 0 lead in this city championship game. The ball is up, it's through, and that is your score 7 0. George Washington taking control of this city championship game. First, the big play on defense, then the big play on offense. Much more coming up. Welcome back to Northeast High School and 6ABC's presentation of the first true city championship game since 1979. The George Washington Eagles very early in this game make a giant statement taking a 7-0 lead. Yeah, certainly the turnover and then uh, just a simple play. I mean, it, this is just grinded out football. And uh, it's wing T football, you know, and with the touchdown, it was nothing more than just being aware of what's going on out in the field. You know, you teach kids, keep moving your feet, look for that open spot. And it's exactly what he did. He bounced to the outside, gets the tremendous block downfield by the wideout. And uh, I think we've got a little surprise right now. And now Jamal Abdur Rockman, Mike Donahue, and Sam Felicia will look for the open spot. Three back deep to receive for the Explorers. And not one of them is going to get it. McFillin no. over their heads. That's a touchback. The Explorers will start once again, first and 10 at their own 20. Yeah, taking benefit of the wind out his back there and uh, just drilling that ball into the end zone, eliminating any chance of a return. So here we go, same situation now for LaSalle's offense. The question here now, Keith, is they going to come out throwing the ball like they did in the first drive, or are they going to settle down a little bit, try to establish the running game? Is that something at this point that Coach Drew Gordon should, should mandate, that they get a couple runs underneath their belt and, and, and calm down? Well, you would think so in a situation like this. Uh, the prudent thing to do would be to run the game, but uh, run the ball, but he's the coach. 
And there you have it, Vince. They listened to Vince. <laughs> they heard him loud and clear. And there's Abdur Rahman up the middle with a nice solid gain on first down. Yeah, just good blocking up front by the right tackle and the right, uh, right guard, uh, Matt DiGiacomo and Jake Hostrander. It was just basic power football. You've got a nice gain, six yards, uh, a good call to have second and four, a nice down and distance situation. And now maybe Lockery can find a nice safe pass as he comes back to the huddle. Well, he likes those short passes. They run those curl routes. Excellent. The receivers are just so technically sound. Uh, a joy to watch him in practice this week. Lockery on the verge of setting a lot of passing records at LaSalle High School, breaking some of the marks held by the coach's son, Brett Gordon, on second down. The handoff, once again, right up the gut, and it appears it may be enough for a first down, Vince. So second drive for LaSalle. They change it up. They go run, they go run, and they move the sticks. Yeah, nice statement. Left guard Steve Zostak, uh, Sean Abbott, the center, and Matt DiGiacomo, the right guard. Power football, first down, two carries. Uh, we'll see what happens. I think he's going to come with a pass right now. Lockery, known on the team as Drew Lock Mom. They say when the <laughs> team gets out of control, needs to be settled down. He's the voice of reason, making folks call him Mom. <laughs> Henceforth, the name Drew Lock Mom. We have a delay. Delay on the offense. Right now, it seems like Lock Mom and the rest of his explorers all out of sorts, Vince. Delay a game, yeah. backing them up five yards. Yeah, it's interesting what happens. You know, he's going to get the call from the sideline from the coach. Drew Gordon is the offensive coordinator here, Keith. And then occasionally what he's going to do, if he's not comfortable with what he has there and he doesn't think the play is going to go, he'll look out to the coach to see if he's got an audible. And I, there he is right now. He's looking at his coach to see if that's the call they want to go with. All right, there's the audible. It came from the sideline. And now the backs have gone from an eye formation to split behind Lockery. Sam Felicia, once again, on his hands, off his hands, right now, give credit to that George Washington second. Secondary. Yeah, yeah, just really nice coverage out there in the secondary by uh, Lorenzo Adams. They ran what on the left-hand side I was watching this week. It's called the stutter. And if Adams was giving him really tight coverage, and there's a ball going off the hands of, uh, of Felicia. But Adams is giving him really tight coverage. And uh, when he does that, he's going to get a little stutter step. You know, it's like trying to go up over top, but he just couldn't kind of come down with a pass. It's a matter of confidence right now. And as a smaller defensive back, once that receiver gets his hands on the ball, you just rip away at those hands. And right now, Sharif Floyd ripping away at the LaSalle line of scrimmage. That run play going nowhere. So now it's second and long. Yeah, they might be calling the Drew Lockery lock my mom. You can call Lloyd whatever you want. The man at 300 pounds, he wasn't fooled on that little delay draw. And make it third and 19 for the Explorers, an offense that has not gotten off the ground just yet. And surprisingly so. Now, what do you do against the win? You've got third and 20. I mean, this is an easy call for the defense. And uh, the, you can see they're loosened up right now. So. The receivers on a loose defense like to run what they call the Utah, which is a double move. Oh, here we go. This time it looks like George Washington jumped prematurely. And that will give five yards back to the Explorers. Five-yard penalty. You got that flagger. Making it third and 14, so much more manageable than third and 19. Yeah, a little Encroaching. bit more manageable. The kind of thing that's going to drive any coach crazy. My God, you know, you work so hard to get that third and 20, and then you just give them five back. It's a gift. Come on. But definitely the Eagles exuberant, seeing a chance to, to tee off on Lockery. They couldn't wait to get after him, just like I'll bet they, they'll get after him on this play. All right, here we go. Single set. Lockery back to pass. We all face rejection sooner <laughs> than later. Martin Haynes batting it down, and that forces the Explorers to punt. Yeah, the 6'2 junior getting all of it, especially with his arms. Key is he was uh, he got great penetration from his right defensive end spot. So now here we've got the return, punting into the win. Oh, baby, this could be good field position here for those Eagles. The Eagles with two back, Jamal Williams and Lorenzo Adams. High snap, oh my, that is ugly. But somehow, Donahue gets the punt off, and it's touchdown. The Eagles will take over 
in Explorers territory. They're in great shape, Vince. That was just a great athletic play by Donahue and, and, and athleticism and also good field sense. He didn't panic and he got that punt away and was able to get it out to about the 48-yard line. That could have been absolutely devastating there from LaSalle. Right now, a little chink in that armor and, and, and that swagger they had when they come, came in earlier uh, isn't quite as um, extreme as it was. And, and Coach Ron Cohen has to be pleased. The coach for all 10 of GW's Public League titles, he has to have a smile on his face right now. Quarterback Aaron Wilmer, he's not smiling. He's getting taken down hard on first down. Virtually no gain. That'll bring up around the second down and 10. Yeah, he's looking downfield to his key receivers there, and he just couldn't get anything going. Too much pressure up front. He really scrambles well. He made some phenomenal plays last week in the championship game, but couldn't avoid the sack this time. It looked like Wilmer was going to drop back and obviously attempt some sort of pass play. You have to wonder if the Eagles want to go back to doing what they did so well on that shortened first drive, which was pound the ball and mm -hmm. pound the ball mm -hmm. at that Explorers defense. Wilmer under center. Play action. He's going deep. Omar Hunter catching everyone by surprise. Are you kidding me? You know, just taking advantage of being with the wind, just a tremendous adjustment on the ball by Hunter. He got to the inside of the defender. Uh, he stayed with the ball the whole time. It's a, it was just a simple go route. They had a little play action in the backfield, but as beautiful as it gets. Here we go. Watch Hunter right now. Just and go up for the ball. Takes the ball away from the defender. That's just simply wanting it more, Vince. Well, and, and, and being in good position. You have to have good body position. Two plays, touchdown. Two plays, touchdown. And now it's 14-0, George Washington. A surprising start to this true city championship game right here on 6ABC. It remains to be seen if LaSalle can wake up or if GW will continue to rock the explosion. Coach Drew Gordon has to be shocked, bewildered, wondering what just happened to start this ball game. George Washington with a 14-0 lead Two two-play drives, Vince Papali. And nothing going right. You know, it's one at passing game. He's got three drops, one interception, and now a little bit of a change up here in their coverage for their uh, kickoff return. They've got three deep. They don't want this ball to try to get through the end zone. The ball picked up by Felicia, looking for some open room. He slips a man and busts outside. Felicia, that might be a play that gets LaSalle started. Yeah, well, phenomenal field position, and it might be the play that's going to get Sam Felicia started. He's a really great kid. I got a chance to know him during the summer, did some football events with him, and, and nobody wants it more than him. And there you see he's going to break to the right after he sees this scene, gets out to the sideline, gets the ball near the 45-yard line. Tremendous play by Felicia. He needs now to take that and, and, and take this forward and, and make, a, make a few grabs. And what LaSalle needs more than anything is to move this ball down the field. An offense that has been sputtering and sputter some more. The first down handoff to Rockmine going nowhere. Looks like a loss of two. Yeah, a loss of two and more than that, you have Rockmine really upset and he's questioning the blocking up there. The kinds of things that as a coach you just don't want to see. You know, you want to have everybody together as one and together as a team. And it was one of the things that George Washington was stressing all week in practice this week, Keith. We want to stress if you want to watch Michigan, Ohio State, you can watch it right now on our sister station, ESPN. Second down and 11 for the Explorers. Once again, it, it looks like the Eagles too ambitious on that line of scrimmage. Yeah, they've already gotten a couple gifts, you know, from LaSalle. They don't want to give LaSalle any gifts right now. That was gift wrap. Uh, it's going to give him five yards. It makes the call a lot easier now for the coach. Down. Right now, Vince, you have to admit, Defense. That's been LaSalle's most effective offense. Yeah, it has. George Washington penalties. Yeah, yeah, that's the 10 yards that they've gotten. Some the most yards they've gotten in, in their first two series is now working on their third. And we did have a little bit of a loss, so we have second and six here. Second and six. Just over five minutes left in the first quarter. The Eagles striking first, striking fast. They lead 14-0. Lockery rolling out, going down the sidelines. Finally, Lockery on target to Connor Hoffman. Hoffman ruled down inside the five-yard line. That's the big play, the big play 
that LaSalle was looking for. Oh, uh, yeah, the huge play. We know they're explosive, and what Hoffman did, it was a one-man route. He just got tremendous p protection on the outside as Lockery was rowing to the right. And, um, and, and what Hoffman simply did is he ran the stutter, and he's trying to stretch out to get over the line, you know, get that touchdown. He's watching a lot of TV here. But uh, not to take away from the route, remember I was talking about that stutter route that they run earlier? That was that stutter. Had the tight coverage, and then he did the little juke and got to the outside and got to. But a great pass by Lockery on the, uh, against the win. And you would have to imagine now is not the time for LaSalle to get fancy. You would think. The rollout from Lockery. He has his man. Is that Donahue? That is. That's Donahue. Donna what? Donahue. Yeah, and he, all of a sudden, LaSalle is <laughs> on the board. Yeah, Donahue, he's just got such great hands. He's very versatile there, tremendous blocker. You'll see him just slip on the right-hand side out, right over the goal line. He knows he's open. Tremendous delivery by Lockery. That's the key. It's all timing. Bang, right now, touchdown. Back in the game. A Mike Bennett extra point. And now LaSalle will be down just one touchdown after a terrible start to this True City Championship. Barely. Barely snuck that. Didn't look good from here, but uh, he, he trills through his 47th PAT of the year. He had some big field goals this year, too, but he got the benefit of everything there. You look at Keita Crispina, the oh, defensive man. coordinator for the George Washington Eagles. He said, we're going to hit them, we're going to pound them, we're going to attack them the minute they get their hands on the ball. Unfortunately for GW, this play was too quick. Yeah, that Donahue again. You know, it's all timing. He got everybody out in front, and a tremendous play, something we watched him do during uh, practice this week. Keita Crispina, by the way, is one of the guys that was the star in Invincible. Got the, he's a good buddy of Mark Wahlberg. Tremendous guy. Played for the Philadelphia Soul. And he gave us a lot of good stuff this week. But if, if, if the defense here of George Washington is going to play with the same fervor and enthusiasm of Keita Crispina, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Keita Crispina, known for being an excellent member of the Temple Owls football program, came up in the public league. He said that is their goal, to restore glory to a public league that not many folks are, are given a shot to. He, he says they have the entire public league on their backs. That's how much pressure there is in this ball game. Well, they feel like the stepsister right here. The kickoff coming down to Omar Hunter. Hunter finding his way to the outside, cutting back, taken down at around the 44-yard line. Yeah, just doing a tremendous job there, Hunter. Or is that Brady? No, that's Hunter. Yeah, okay. Just a great job. What he did is uh, he, he just worked his way, found the open hole, got to the outside. Now, there's two good kickoff returns. He set up phenomenal football uh, field position. Vince, you play special line. teams. Yeah. How special a role does it play in, in helping oh, these uh, offenses? You know, it's all about attitude. You know, you got to feel that you're helping the offense and the defense out here. Aaron Wilmer with the straight handoff. Up the gut to Kyle Glenn. Pushes forward for around the gain of four yards on first down, bringing up second and six. Yeah, any coach will tell you that's all about field position and where you start with the football. Lousy field position, two 20-yard possessions, 20-yard line possessions for LaSalle to start the game, and they broke down, and then you have, the, especially offensively. And then when they got the good field position, they can do different things, and they get to a touchdown. So here we are, good field position here. We'll see what GW does. Definitely the return games of both teams helping their offenses the stopping the return, however, hurting both teams as well. A nice aggressive run by Keysign Christopher. Found a way where there looked like there was little room to gain four more, and now we bring up third and two. Yeah, that was a tremendous play there, too, by Shane Brady on defense, and uh, he sort of threw things to the inside. I guess we want to set this offense up here. You, you look at this offense, obviously it's powered by the running game. Sharif Floyd. The big offensive lineman, you know, they're actually holding a benefit for him at O'Meara's Tavern on Bustleton Avenue tomorrow so he can raise funds to attend a combine for, for some of the best college prospects in the nation. Currently, he can't afford to send himself, so that's how the school is helping out. Fake handoff, and now the real handoff to Keyson Christopher. It doesn't look like they got that first down, Vince. No. I I don't think so, and it looks like it's going to be a situation here where they're going to be uh, 
force to make a decision, and we have the defense up here for uh, for LaSalle. With and that is Steve Sinnott, not Sinnott, actually like a member of the Senate. He's on the <laughs> defensive end. And now you look at the linebackers and the secondary for the LaSalle Explorers. First big decision here, Coach Cohen. He's going for it. Where Fourth it? and one. This is the city championship. Let it all hang loose. And hang loose it has. Look at Wilmer. He's still going, still on his feet, pushing his way down to around the LaSalle 40. That's a lot of yards for a quarterback sneak. <laughs> That's just a lot of desire. He's behind a 240-pound center in Tahiraz. But uh, Aaron Wilmer, it's just all hard. Look at him go. He's just going to lower his head. He'll get three or four yards out of it, perhaps trying to draw the offside. He saw he has the open gap. And there he goes, Junior, 5'10", 170 yards. He's only rushed for 68 yards, but I guarantee you, they're the four best yards he got all year. And Hart is something that runs deep in his family. He has two brothers playing college football. They're starters right now, one at Albright College, one at Millersville. Just under three minutes left in the first quarter. First and 10 for the Eagles. Handoff to Christopher. Looked like he had a hole, and then he was banged back just to gain him one. Yeah, they're just going to try to soften him up a little bit and some good linebacker play there by number 45, uh, 45 Joe Radzuzuski and 185-pound uh, senior. Uh, going to go with a running game right now, but I wouldn't be surprised for him to put it up in the ball right now. It's just, this is so much fun to watch already, isn't it? Don't you love it? What did that fourth and one gamble tell you about George Washington's desire and well, motivation for this it, game? It tells you about the confidence the coach has in his team and in his players. That's what that's all about. Wilmer dropping back, finds Christopher. Christopher eludes one man. Not going to elude the rest of the Explorers. During this week at practice, Vince, you know what they told us? The Explorers call themselves the people's defense. Is that they right? call themselves the people's defense because while there are only 11 on the field, they rotate around 18, 19 guys throughout the course of the game. And right here, Christopher definitely felt like he was being ganged up by a bunch of people. Oh, absolutely. He had the entire defense there. You talk about team tackling and team defense and flowing to the ball. That's the picture that you'll see in the dictionary. Just a tremendous defensive play by the LaSalle D. And that brings up third and nine for the George Washington Eagles. They struck first. They struck fast. They took a commanding 14-0 lead. LaSalle answered back with a touchdown just moments ago. And now it's 39 for Wilmer and the boys. Wilmer spinning, twisting, plowing forward, but not nearly enough for the first down. And now looking at a fourth and five, you would pretty much think that this is not a gamble for George Washington. Punt the ball away and, and back LaSalle up. Yeah, but uh, Ron Cohen's pretty wildly. Right now it doesn't look like he's going to punt. As the quarterback's looking downfield, he's got nothing. He had a three-man route, tremendous coverage. Uh, LaSalle was in his own defense, and now he's just trying to make it with his legs. Tremendous heart, but just too many guys to try to get through. So now we've got that fourth and long. And once again, Vince, it looks like the Eagles... We'll, we'll, we'll test the Explorers' defense in a big way as they line up to go for another fourth down conversion. And it looks like Wilmer is in the shotgun. Back to pass. He's rolling. He's firing. That pass is incomplete. Kevin Forster, tremendous defense there, just driving through the wide receiver trying to make the catch. Uh, it was there. The play was there. It was just um, a tremendous play by Forster. He just jarred it loose. And now you have to wonder if that decision will come back to bite the Eagles as LaSalle takes over at almost their 40-yard line. Yeah, absolutely. But they're the decisions that Ron Cohen's going to have to live with. He went with the fourth and one before, and uh, I'm sure he can deal with this one. Just under a half minute left and what has been an action-packed first quarter. Drew Lockery under center for the Explorers. Looks like GW's coverage was out of place, but not that out of place. Lockery again with the bad decision picked off by Nate Smith. And you know what they call him as a true freshman? Nasty Nate. Yeah. Nasty Nate with the nasty play. Another big break for GW. Just a tremendous, tremendous play on the ball. He just jumped the route. Uh, the receiver that was there, I would say, if anything, I think the delivery might just been a little bit too late there by Lockery. And here it is. And, and you see Nate, he, the, the true freshman, just coming in. And what a tremendous story he is we'll maybe have a chance to talk about later on. Uh, he's a transplant from the hurricane down in New Orleans. 
Nate Smith, a gutsy young man on the field and off as GW takes the football, very much looking to put another touchdown on the board. A run good for around three yards, which will bring up a second and seven as time runs out in this first quarter. The George Washington Eagles have gotten some breaks, and then again, they've made their own. They surprisingly lead this True City Championship 14 to seven. Much more coming up from Northeast High. The Explorers think can come back. The Eagles looking to put more distance between themselves and LaSalle. the second quarter of the city championship GW leading LaSalle 14 to 7 we toss it down to Walter Perez Walter you're on the Eagle sideline a sideline that has plenty of momentum right now no doubt about it Keith the two things that I'm really noticing from the sidelines number one is George Washington's speed they're really outrunning LaSalle in a big way and George Washington's defensive line play they are really beating up that offensive line of LaSalle thank you Walter Perez that was a run up the, around the corner to Kyle Glenn, so that brings up third and long for GW. The ball just inside LaSalle's 20. They could sorely use a touchdown right now, Vince, to, to make it a two-touchdown game once again. Yeah, anything. McFillin's quite a field goal kicker. He's kicked a few this year, but against this win, I was watching all kinds of crazy things happen to the ball. And uh, Glenn, with that tremendous speed in that last play, just got no chance to get set. It's coming. He's ready. He's coming. Third and long for the Eagles. Mike. Wilmer lines up under center. Two backs behind him. And now the end around. Omar Hunter. Omar Hunter nearly with the first down. It's almost like the Statue of Liberty. You know, it was just such a great job downfield by one of the by Kyle Glenn. He, he just threw a tremendous block and tied up the quarterback to enable Hunter to get around. Here he comes. He's working his way around the corner. Look at number six. So come in here. There he is right now. You missed his block. Number nine down there, Kassan Christopher. Everybody part of the action. And there now it, it brings again. up. All right, here he comes right around the end. Look for your two blocks downfield. That's all speed. You got to outrun the offensive lineman. Do we get a first down? Apparently, he did get enough for that first down. And so it's first and goal for the Eagles. Oh, look at that. Oh, Jesus. Untouched until he's across the goal line. Kyle Glenn has the Eagles flying high once again. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to step on you there, partner. But I was just so impressed with how quickly he got off the ball. He's running off Waverly Harris, Lucky James, uh, Tamirez the center of I it, mean, just great blocking up front. Kyle Glenn definitely knows how to rep up, step up his second touchdown of this ball game. Yeah, and if he gets one of his guys in his way, he just pushes him away and makes sure he throws a block. An extra point away from taking a two touchdown lead, and there it is. George Washington on top of LaSalle, 21 to 7, something no one. Not, not between you and I expected to see. And nobody would have expected to see this. And LaSalle has to be stunned, absolutely stunned at this point. We're looking across the field at the, uh, at, at, at the stands. And, you know, interesting enough, they don't have anybody in white. Okay, here's one of the key plays. Just right up, it's, it's just a straight dive play. It's just tremendous blocking up front. And, and that's all hard, you know, but the, the, key, the key here is just the explosiveness off the ball. And a little bit of, a, uh, a little bit of action to the right, which will certainly affect with it, the way the defensive line is going to go and get them moving to the left and then coming back the other way. When we attended LaSalle practice this week, Coach Drew Gordon said he worried about the fact that they only had six days to prepare for an unknown entity. Right now, that unknown entity, the George Washington Eagles, definitely sneaking up on the Explorers. Well, there's a known entity, and that's thing that's called pride. And there's a guy there, a coach, who's been here since 1985. You know, he's got 10 championships. You know these guys are going to commit strong. On the other hand, if you want to be away from the game for two weeks, you know, so you have two ways to look at that corner. George Washington did not know its opponent, but definitely had more time off to get prepared, dot the I's, cross the T's, and right now they certainly look like the more prepared ball club, leading 21 to seven, just over 10 and a half minutes before halftime. Well, uncharacteristic mistakes on the part of the Explorers, interceptions, drop passes. The short kickoff coming down to Felicia, and speaking of a drop, there's another. 
It looks like it went out of bounds, and it will still be LaSalle ball at around the 25-yard line. But but Facetia, right now we're talking about a case of bad hands for a guy who was described to have some of the best. Yeah, well, right there he made the key mistake of looking upfield instead of looking the ball into his hands. I like how he was aggressive. He ran up and caught the ball and let it stand, trying to, to – to, Letting it drop and hit the ground, but uh, it's all concentration at this point. Coach Drew Gordon said what brought the team together was a loss to Malvern Prep. That's when they questioned themselves. They went back and beat West Catholic. They ended St. Joe's Prep's 55-game regular season league winning streak. Now they find themselves in the same boat. This is gut check time, and right now it's not working out well for the Explorers. And here you have the, the true freshman. He's coming up, making a great play in the corner, forcing the action, and uh, no way that uh, Rockmont's going to be able to get away from it. And I think right now he's just a little frustrated. It seems like the entire LaSalle offense is frustrated. When they've tried to pass the ball, that hasn't worked out. When they've tried to run the ball, that hasn't worked out. They're still trying to figure out this speedy, fast GW defense. And they've got some speed, quickness, and toughness. Second and 15, Lockery under center. Straight handoff, and that's not going to cut it either. The Eagles will not budge right now on D, and that brings up third and long for LaSalle. Mike Donahoe, nowhere to go for Big Mike. Uh, it's just too much uh, pre penetration there as he's getting his hands on the ball as we see it, the action right at this particular point. A guy last week that had as his eye black pop-up for his uh, grandfather who wasn't doing so well and uh, probably doing the same thing today. Just nothing there for him. Give him an A for effort, E for execution, and that brings up third and long for the Explorers. Lockery dropping back to pass. Finds his man, Donahue. Donahue dragged down way short of the first down. Yeah, we call that a drag out. You have your wide receiver, Sam Felicia, just running the deep route to try to clear through the zone and have Donahue coming there. You'll see Donahue come into the picture as quarterback rowing there. Just a tremendous catch by Donahue, and then a sure, sure, sure tackle. You can see the clear route, the deep guy down there. It's just a tremendous tackle by number two, Jamal Williams. Vince, I think we've seen the same theme develop over and over again. LaSalle finds itself in bad situations, barely getting that punt off. Always facing long distance. You see a flag on the play as Williams makes the return. But LaSalle always finding itself in third and long, seeming to make mistakes, that time playing it safe, but you can't get your offense off the ground if you're constantly facing third and long. Well, the third and long is a result, there's an injury on the field we have right now, the third and long is a result of not getting off the ball on the first and 10. Injured player on the field, Joe Kerrigan. Make that John Kerrigan, a senior linebacker for the LaSalle Explorers. Much more coming up. GW leading this True City Championship. Welcome 21 back to Northeast seven. High School and 6 ABC's coverage of the True City Championship game. John Kerrigan, the senior linebacker for the LaSalle Explorers, helped up off the field. That's a great sign. And for LaSalle, so is this. Before we went to timeout, George Washington called for a personal foul. Giving the ball back to the Explorers, what a lucky break. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You would have thought they're going to have the possession right now, an opportunity to go up with three scores, and now uh, they're going to lose that possession. Uh, but the most important thing right now is that number 27, Kerrigan, is okay. John Kerrigan went down in the heat, walking off under his own power, and that is a great sign. For LaSalle, it's a great sign that despite a miserable first half, they're down two scores, but there's still over eight minutes to play, and now they can do some damage and make this thing a ball game. Lockery, back to pass, going up the middle. Just too much on that pass, Vince. Yeah, yeah, he's trying to get out to, uh, to Steve Sennett, the tight end, and try to get it across the middle. He had three men deep, coverage was good, and uh, just nothing happened, and maybe the wind got it and cause it to sail somewhat. There it is, and you see Senate wide open on the side of the field. 
But, um, you know, the wind will play tricks with it, so you can't blame anybody on that one. And maybe that's something for LaSalle to explore some more. The middle of the field was wide open. Mm -hmm. To this point in the game, they've tried to hit GW on the outside. Maybe they want to take more shots down the middle of the field. Lockery with two fakes on this play, rolling out, firing, incomplete. Incomplete to Mike Donahue. You know, will bring up another third and long. Th there's another example. They, they, they really had a great scheme to the route. You had you had Connor Hoffman going deep, and then you had Donahoe come up underneath, and, and he just made such a tremendous drive back to the ball. He gave a good target to the quarterback, but he just wasn't able to come up with a catch. And there are these little things that LaSalle's not doing right now that's just their demise at this particular point. Lockery throwing for almost 2,400 yards in the season. But so far, this is not a day to remember. Lockery dropping back. He can't find anything. And now George Washington has found him. Bryant Davis saying, where are you going? And the answer is nowhere. <laughs> Well, you're gonna, this is what they call coverage sack. He's looking downfield. You had three guys into the route, five guys deep, quarterback locker. He had nowhere to throw that ball, and, uh, and there it was. And then he eventually just had to eat it. But it was all coverage sack. With the exception of one drive, the George Washington defense has dominated the LaSalle offense in this first half. Get away from it. <laughs> Lorenzo Adams letting the ball roll to a stop. GW will take over around its 38-yard line. A first half where they have not done many things wrong, and that's why they lead this game 21-7. You know, here's, here's the team, LaSalle. They average 33 points a game, almost 365 yards in total offense, over 200 yards in passing. They're nowhere. I don't think they've got 50 yards right now in the first half in total offense, and I'm sure we'll get that stat soon. Uh, they have to be in total shock right now. This is a big, big defensive series right now for the D. Coach Ron Cohen of George Washington said they were fairly lucky to beat Northeast in the Public League title game. Today, however, the Eagles seem to be making their own luck. Well, he, <laughs> he's so self-effacing. He would say that anyway. You know, he's so quiet and unassuming. And uh, here you go right now with, uh, with George Washington just trying to power game to see what they can get on that first, run that first down play. And that will bring up second and seven for the Eagles. They've definitely established the ground attack in this first half. And Vince, you know better than anyone, those LaSalle Explorer defenders might look energetic, but at some point they have to get tired if they keep you know, staying on the field. <laughs> you would think. Wilmer, the handoff, Omar Hunter, and Omar Hunter has another George Washington first down. Yeah, you just talk about some great blocking on the outside. It's just, a, a, you know, Hunter, he, he was making the moves, but watch the block that's coming up right now on the outside. Just pancakes the guy. And, and now we've got a first down. You know, it's just further truth. You just can't do it alone. You've got to have some great defense, the, the teammates. And it's just tremendous downfield blocking. George Washington once again in LaSalle territory. Wilmer under center. Straight handoff. They keep chewing up the yards. And the clock and the clock and there's just six yards see that's the difference that's the difference between what their offense is doing and what LaSalle's offense isn't they're getting those five and six yards on first down and that was Chief slow but he did not look slow on that carry he hit that hole quickly and that brings up second and four You're just over me, five <laughs> I, I will play on every name for you before this day is over Vince <laughs> around five and a half left before we hit the break, George Washington leading LaSalle 21-7 in this true city championship game. Wilmer back to pass, but will he get it off? There's your answer, and the answer is no. Yeah, the answer is no. You know what? He had his big guy. He had Fowler, his tight end, his very reliable tight end downfield right now, but he just couldn't get it. There was just too much pressure, and uh, he had to eat that one in this one. That was all on the coverage there. You see quarterback pass, but he's looking downfield for Fowler, but 
really good backside pursuit by number 85. And uh, that would be who? Ryan Eidenshank never gave up never. in pursuit of Aaron Wilmer. And for the first time in a long time, GW facing a third and long. And the passing game has not appeared to be their strength this afternoon. No. And they're all tight right now. They are in right now basically a double wing T. Wilmer going to play it safe. The handoff goes hardly anywhere. Yeah, Kevin Forster saying none of that. You have the great speed outside by your running back, but uh, he ain't gonna. He he's not gonna deal with that. Makes a tremendous open field tackle and forces the punt. Elijah Douglas dragged down, and now the Eagles will turn the ball over. They will turn the ball back over to the Explorers, who dropped too deep. You can see Douglas had no running room. Look at that ball. It just died. Yeah, it was like a knuckler. And so the Explorers will take over at their own 33, trailing this city championship game 21 to 7, desperately needing to mount a drive to pull themselves back within reach. Much more of the true city title game coming up right here on 6. The George Washington Eagles all smiles, and rightfully so. They lead this Truth City title game 21-7, just over three and a half minutes left. And you can see a change of sidelines equals a change of expressions. Nothing to smile about right now for LaSalle. Lockery rolling out. Finds Rockmine, but it's waved off. It's ruled incomplete. He bobbled the ball along the sidelines. Not a hookup on that play, Vince. Yeah, I had Rockman. It was a, just a nice pass, but just a little, delivered a little bit too late because Rockman uh, running out of room. Lockery rolling to his right. Uh, a decent field position, but here we go once again. You've got that first down. Uh, they get nothing on it. Now you've got second and long, and it puts them in a precarious uh, position. A lot of time left, 334. Got the wind at the back, so we'll see what they do. At this point, it appears GW could certainly use a halftime break to gather themselves and, and gather their composure. Lockery with the straight handoff. Rockmine, drag down, a gain of two. That brings up third and eight. Yeah, little or no gain. Abdel Kanan uh, is 240 pounds just all over Rockmine, and he's just not getting off, and he's got to be totally frustrated at this point. Rockmine talking to the Sal coaches is the explosion in their offense, but he has not been explosive today. Well, he just hasn't had an opportunity because right now I would easily say that the defensive line here of George Washington, the offensive line of LaSalle. Third and nine for the Explorers. Just under three minutes left before we hit halftime. They trail 21 to seven in this true city title game. Lockery, back to pass. He cannot avoid pounced on him. Yeah, Sharif was there. He's trying to get downfield to his number one guy, Sam Felicia. Sam Felicia running a, a, an inside route. He's running that curl at about 14 yards, but tremendous coverage by Lorenzo James. So you see him looking to his right now, it, coming left because he's coming over to Felicia. He pounced on Lockery so hard, Lockery is still lying on the ground. Oh my goodness. And that's a lot of pouncing with that big guy. 300 pounds. As we wait to see if Lockery can get up from that crushing hit, just to tell you about Floyd, he is the most highly touted member of this GW team, already drawing interest from Miami and the likes of Boston College. We kick it down to Walter Perez. Hey guys, I want to make a little bit of a comment about what's happening offensively for both teams. You guys really see it in the punts when you see the, the ball being affected by the wind, but it's really happening a lot as well when they're passing the ball. Clearly, that's affecting LaSalle a lot more. It's incredible when you watch from the sidelines, you can literally see the ball zigzagging left and right. Those are the low passes. You see a lot more clearly with the punts, but it's happening with the passes as well. Walter Perez taking note of how the ball seems to be moving down on the field. We're taking note of Lockery moving off onto the sidelines. Vince, how does it feel to have somebody 300 pounds pounce on you as Floyd did just a, a minute ago? Well, I've never had one guy 300 pounds pounce on me, but I've had five guys 250 pounds <laughs> pounce on me. It don't feel good, I want you to know that. 
<laughs> Definitely didn't yeah, feel good. For and Lachlan. a lot of guys chasing after me too. <laughs> oh man! Another bad punt in these wind conditions. Touchdown by a member of the LaSalle Explorers. George Washington will take over and what could be the final drive in the first half at their own 43. Got to get more than that on that punt. You got to win at your back, do anything you can to uh, put George Washington back just a little bit. Tremendous field position. Last time they started right now, they came at that kind of field position. They came out throwing the ball. We'll see. The GW Eagles have won seven straight games to get here. A surprising performance on offense but a great performance as they've had all year on defense. During one four-game stretch, they held their opponents to a combined nine points, pitching two straight shutouts. They basically given LaSalle nothing in this first half. Wilmer with the handoff to Christopher, cutting outside, getting dragged down for a loss of four. Nothing there, going a little conservative right now. Big loss, four yards, uh, be an interesting call coming up then on second down. And it looks like uh, we have an official timeout here, or is this a team timeout? LaSalle has called for timeout. LaSalle obviously, with just over two minutes left, would like to stop George Washington on the next two downs, get that ball back, and seemingly mount a drive that pulls him closer in this contest. Yeah, we just saw the tremendous speed of the, of the LaSalle defense pulling the running back down, and uh, everybody huddled up on the sideline over there on the south side. Uh, they just have to get it going offensively. You know, there's a couple big plays there by the uh, George Washington offense, but of course, a couple interceptions, you know, and, 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 uh, and the offense just isn't rolling here for those explorers. Coming off that victory against Father Judge, LaSalle had all the hype, had all the momentum, had all the belief in this town that they were going to be too powerful, they were going to overmatch the George Washington Eagles. A as a player, Vince, and when you're in that situation where you come in as the favorite and then other team hits you and it hits you, do you start to question yourself? As from, a deep, from the uh, George Washington point of view? For, from the standpoint of LaSalle coming in and having everyone tell them all week they were the favorites, I and now DW so. has surprised them. What, what are the Explorers thinking right now? Well, well, right now they've got to be in a state of shock, and I know the Explorers were relishing, I mean, uh, George Washington relishing the role being the underdog. Wilmer under center. With the handoff. Going outside once again. Going nowhere, Keyson Christopher dragged down again, and all of a sudden, the Eagles are going backwards. Yeah, Joe Radizewski, he just was not fooled. You know, one of the things that you try to teach anybody who's playing defense, stay home, stay home, stay home. So as you see the running back coming here on this side, it's got a little bit of a counteraction to the right, coming now back to the left, but Radizewski stays exactly where he's supposed to be, makes a tremendous play and makes a tackle and gets good support from his corner. And once again, we see the strategy of the LaSalle Explorers taking another timeout. They mm -hmm. want to keep that clock stopped. They want to force, you know, a, a, a third down a, a situation where GW can't convert so they can get that ball back, mount a drive, and pull themselves within a score at the break. Oh, of course, what they desperately want, they want to have some sort of momentum going in at halftime. We're looking at 21-7, a buck 45 to go here, and really nothing happening for LaSalle except for that one play. They'll do anything. But, you know, going back to that point that we had a chance to be out there and visit George Washington, they just, aside from the fact, you know, looking on the upside with LaSalle being told, oh, guys, you know, the, the, you guys are just going to, you're going to roll. And then you have the other guys, and they just loved being the underdog. Just loved it. And they were in their faces the entire week about it. And, um, and here we have it, you know. George Washington with players that come from all sections of the city to attend George Washington High School. And, they and the country. And, and they <laughs> practice. They are represented. The student body is represented from students from 67 countries that speak 27 languages. A well-rounded school, and right now a well-rounded attack for the Eagles. And it continues. Aaron Wilmer hits James Fowler. And you can tell us about Mr. Fowler. Well, I like a lot. I like this guy Fowler. I mean, he, he's, a, he, he's a player, kind of a player, you know? He's just a hard-nosed tight end. Look at that 44, you know? He just sort of brings you back to the days of Pete Retzlaff. He settles down, see him settle down right there in the zone, and the quarterback finds him, and he gets that tough yardage. He had so many great two, two catches in the overtime games in the championship game that got Northeast, I mean, got George Washington here in that game against Northeast. <laughs> 
Fowler is, is is something, and he's another one, you know, from around the city. He lives in the Mayfair section, and uh, all his buddies are from different teams around the city. His mother, a firefighter. A firefighter. He said he would dedicate this season to her, not because something happened to her, but because he respects what firefighters do each and every day, putting their lives on the line. Absolutely. Here we have the completion here, and it goes just back a little bit further because, you know, Ron Cohen, the coach here for George Washington, started at GW in 1985. The guy without the pedigree, you got to love this one, right? He didn't have the pedigree. He walks away with 10 titles. But his father, Fowler's father, Chuck, played on the first team that Cohen ever coached here at George Washington. So a lot of history here with the Fowler family at a big play. Second and 10, 105, baby. And George Washington looking to make its own history, looking to write its own chapter in history. And so far, having their way with the LaSalle Explorers, short gain on second down, as we are inside a minute left in the first half. And that will bring up around a third and eight. Well, now we have the guy, now we have the uh, the timeout being called on the uh, George Washington side. If I didn't know better and know that there are gale force winds in their face right now, I'd say they're playing for the field goal because Will McFillin has got a pretty strong leg. But uh, with his third long, I, you got to look for Fowler. You know, he's just such a smart kid. And what they're doing is they're taking their wide receivers and they're, and they're running them long, running them through the zone, so that Fowler find the open spot. It will bring up third and long for the George Washington Eagles. The Eagles have a proud history. This year, their 10th public league title. Only Northeast with 11, Central with 13, and Frankfurt with 27 have more. Looking to make another giant statement today that they are the true city champion in the city of Philadelphia. Well, you got two coaches of the year going head to head with each other. It's just a tremendous battle of wits. You know, you got the young gun and Drew Gordon. The guy's wily old veteran and Ron Cohen. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that they make movies about. LaSalle has its own pedigree. Ten Catholic League titles. Only West Catholic and St. Joe's Prep have more than the Explorers as we line up for this crucial third down inside a minute left in the first half. Wilmer, play action. Over the middle. Violent collision inside the five-yard line. Ball incomplete. Yeah, trying to trying to slide one in there to Kyle Glenn, or is that is that Hunter down there to slid in? Yep, it's Omar, Omar Hunter. Hunter. He got deep. Uh, what they did is they took Fowler and they took him and they ran him through the zone. And you would think because he is such a lethal weapon that the, the defense, if you're on the LaSalle side, you're going to foul this guy through the zone. And they tried to spring Hunter um, behind him. But, uh, the a late holding penalty on the call. Oh, uh, here we go. That will back GW up more. You're going to take him, right? It looks like LaSalle may take that penalty, giving George Washington another shot on third down, but driving the Eagles oh, out of scoring goal. range. Certainly had a field goal range, but I think they Holding, 53 offense. He looking good down there. And he looked good and that, invincible. That's, that's your buddy sure. from the movie. That's my man from the movie. Always calling a fair game. All right, coach. What do you got going for you there? Uh, John Steinmetz, defensive coordinator for LaSalle. Aaron Wilmer at this point, Vince, you would think, would just play it safe. It's GW with the two-touchdown lead, not the other way around. Well, they're in a safe formation. A handoff that did not go anywhere, but what it did is take some more time off the clock. And LaSalle takes its final time out of the first half. They'll need a big return in order to be in position to mount a drive. Yeah, you're trying to get Douglas out there on the outside, but that's just not the points up there that they have on offense, 21-7, but it's that GW defense. Punting against the wind, that's always an adventure. And you see the tight formation. Definitely don't want that punt blocked. Not at this late juncture of the first half. LaSalle will have to go a long way with just under 35 seconds left if they want to make it a closer ball game. They have a lot of offensive weapons to do it. They've got the arm of Drew Lockery. They've got the great catching ability of Felicia and Connor Huffman. Let's see if they decide they have to just try to get something going, but they don't have any timeouts left. So we're going to see how they're going to be able to uh, 
to, to burn these 34 seconds. But, you know, you have Drew Gordon, the former quarterback from Villanova, you know, so I'm sure he's got these guys pretty well schooled. See what he does. One thing Lockery does not want to do is something he did twice in the first quarter, which is put that ball into the hands of a member of George Washington's secondary as he rolls out the pass on first down. Complete to Rockman, but the clock keeps running. Yeah, just not able to get out of bounds. And it's tick, tick, tick. Oh, they stopped the clock for the first down, so now we've got the, the, the spike with 23 seconds to go. Good stuff, good stuff. You, you stop the clock for the first down, you wind it up again the minute the referee signals to do so. And of course, you're instructed if you're one of the defenders for George Washington, if the guy's catching up on the sideline, keep those guys in bounds. Don't let them get out of bounds. Lockery with a host of wideouts. Five guys split out wide. Almost picked off for the third time in the first half. Well, he had under, he had, he had long and short coverage, you know. Uh, and once again, you're just clearing all your wide receivers downfield. You're taking your big guy, Sam Felicia. He's running deep downfield, and you see Lockery looking to your right. He's trying to get it to Rockman, and you have the guy underneath. You have the guy long. There's nowhere to go with that ball. Just under 20 seconds left, third and 10 for the LaSalle Explorers, able to do absolutely nothing in this first half against the George Washington Eagles. Lockery rolling out, and there he is again. His favorite friend, Sharif Floyd, takes him down one more time. Think they'll have Thanksgiving together? <laughs> yeah, and Sharif is the stuffing. <laughs> but, you know, uh, Keita Crispina, who, who sets up this defensive coverage right here, has just done a magnificent job. They're pretty much in an umbrella coverage. Lockery has nowhere, absolutely nowhere to throw this ball. They're simply trying to get a first down here, maybe get the clock stopped and have a chance for a field goal because they have the wind at their back. And at some point as a quarterback, he has to look around and notice big number 73 is converging on him. <laughs> he's not any big, he's fast, man. That guy's a truck. <laughs> Sharif Floyd with a dominant first half. The Eagles dominant as well. They lead this state championship game, this rather true city championship game. 21 to seven. Felicia with the big catch, but time has expired. Too little, too late. And the Eagles will take a 21 to seven lead to the break. This game has not been played since 1979. The last time it was played, O'Hara beat Lincoln at the vet. That score was 28 to seven. This game used to pack the vet. It used to pack Franklin Field. And today it returns right here to Northeast High School with George Washington leading 21 to seven at the break base. Yeah, right now, and I'd say George Washington has got to be feeling rather invincible. They've just had a tremendous defensive game plan, putting a lot of pressure on Lockery. He's not had an opportunity to drop back. You can see that they've already made the adjustment on the LaSalle side. They've already made the adjustment that most of his passes are rollout passes, and he's looking downfield. There's nobody been open. I'm watching the downfield coverage, and it's just been great job by the GW defense. At halftime, 21-7 to your score. Before we go to break, let's toss it down on the sidelines to Walter Perez. Hey, guys, I'm here with Coach Cohen of the uh, George Washington team, and Coach, I think your guys ate their Wheaties before this game. Fantastic <laughs> job so far. Th thank you. We're playing, we're playing for respect, respect to the public league. Uh, certainly nobody gave us any credit all year, and then certainly nobody thought we could hang in with LaSalle. Hey, they're a great football team, and hopefully you can play the next uh, 24 minutes just like we did this one. Well, you're doing that and more. A quick question, though. Are you keeping it on the ground on purpose because of all this wind, because the ground game is really working for you? No, I mean, that's part of our game plan, but the win had nothing to do with it. We're just trying to play Washington football. We're a ground-oriented team. Sounds good. Thanks, Coach. So once again, your halftime score, George Washington 21, LaSalle 7. We'll be back with much more coming up in just a moment. 
laughed about this week is Coach Drew Gordon looks like Mickey, yeah. Rocky's trainer. Yeah. He, he, he needs to inspire the champ right now. Well, he's a, he is an inspiration because he knows what's going on out there on that field. He's just got a tremendous feel and a tremendous vision. I was talking to John Mastronardo, one of the receivers coaches. He's not on the list. He's a volunteer, but he's a buddy of mine, great receiver from Villanova. As a matter of fact, we uh, competed against each other for a spot with the Eagles. And he, and he said, Vince, one of his greatest strengths is his ability to take a look at that field and see everything that's happening. He's really going to need to be able to use that here in the second half because a lot of adjustments are going to have to be made. And most importantly, I think he just said it, they have to figure out a way to stop that pass rush of GW because right now they're controlling the line. Sharif Floyd, the big man, had a big first half. We did take a look at some highlights, but one thing we did not picture was how he was constantly in that LaSalle backfield. Uh, just tremendous, just blowing over anybody they put over top of him, whether it be one guy, whether it be two guys, whether somebody in the backfield they keep there to try to pick him up. And aside from his size and his bulk, incredible quickness, and you can see why he's a Division I prospect. If you are LaSalle, is it imperative? I mean, do you start breaking up the game in terms of each drive? Is it imperative for them to get GW off that field, get the ball back, and score right away? A good point. Right now, you have to set the, you have to set the tempo. Special teams right now has to set the tempo. Defense has to set the tempo. And there's got to be a stop in this drive right now. They cannot allow George Washington at this point to feel that they can get stay in this football game. You can hear the crowd going into an uproar. We are about to start the second half of this true city championship. Omar Hunter and Jamal Williams back deep for the George Washington Eagles. And we'll have to re-kick. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, that climax. <laughs> but we'll just build it up again. Yeah, it's almost like Charlie Brown. You know, this was built for Thanksgiving, that one, wasn't it? <laughs> All right, where's the guy with the areas? There you go. Put, put their finger on the ball. Just, you know, remember back in the day, he always afraid to be the guy that was going to hold the you, ball. You thought your finger would get kicked off. I never wanted to hold the ball when I was with my buddies. I thought my finger would get yeah, kicked off. Yeah, they'd kick your head. <laughs> that wouldn't hurt too much. Oh, look at that kick right to the goal Omar line. Hunter. Here we go. And taking it out. Taking it out. He was pinned deep. And now he's taken down at around the 16-yard line. That's hey, where GW begins. Yeah, that's what you needed. You needed to stop on special teams right now. You're keeping them inside the 20-yard line. And uh, at this particular point, LaSalle's got the wind in their favor. It's at their backs. They just can't allow a start. They can't, they, they can't allow them to have more than one first down here. So they'll be kicking into the wind. So uh, let's see. Ron Cohen says they're a meat and potatoes kind of team. They're a running game and a running team to see if he starts that way. The running game, the best way to take time off the clock, move the ball down the field, keep LaSalle's defense on the field, and salt this game away. And it's Hunter up the middle on the first down carry. We see the flag come in as well. Yeah, true to his, uh, true to his call. He's just trying to sneak Hunter up there in between the slot between Sharif Floyd and Mike Dennis, and we got the flag. George Washington didn't do many things wrong in that first half. Line of scrimmage. We're going five yards from here. In this case, the foul's on them. Yeah, five yards, previous spot. Yeah, and it's just one of those goofy penalties. You don't have guys lined up right, you know. I mean, it's bad enough that a guy's going to jump, but here you have basically an illegal formation. That'll drive a coach crazy. First and 15 for the George Washington Eagles. In the first half, they struck fast. They struck quick. Their first two touchdown drives, needing only two plays on each drive. They jumped out to that 14-0 lead. LaSalle cut the lead in half. GW put more distance between these two teams, and that's where we stand right now. 21-7 your count. The handoff. Gaining two or three yards. Certainly, it's not a bad position for GW because it's still second and 12. Yeah, you see seven, a nice mix there. You know, the Eagles fans wish the Eagles would have that kind of mix. But uh, yeah, they're trying to t test that right side again, but uh, just good flow all the way around. It was a matter of the defense of LaSalle controlling the line of scrimmage. The Explorers, only two losses on the season. They do not want today to be their third. They believe they are the best team on this field. The first half showed otherwise, but this is their chance to make a statement. This is their chance for redemption, and this is their chance to get back in this ball game. 
But right there, that was a chance to stop the runner before he got all the way upfield. But Omar Hunter refused to go down, bringing up third and short. Yeah, Omar Hunter, as you see here, you would think that he might have the cutback right now. There it is, but uh, because he had tremendous blocking up front, but he decided to stay right behind the numbers of his blocker, and he stayed to his right, and that's what he's supposed to do, and he fights and fights and fights, and now we have that third and two. Third and two for the George Washington Eagles. Coach Ron Cohen worried that experience would be an issue, that his Eagles had not been in a game of this magnitude. Obviously, they are proving their coach wrong, but right there, Aaron Wilmer has proved wrong. He did not convert on that quarterback keeper. Yeah, it was an interesting call, too. Instead of just going right over his center, he sort of shifted a little bit and tried to get behind that big, big right guard, Sharif Floyd, that 300-pounder, and uh, he was slammed back. So now we, I don't think that the coach is going to take a chance here with his fourth and short in this uh, negative territory. George Washington went for fourth down twice in the first half, not at this position of the field. Will McFillin back deep to punt. Punt into that stiff wind again. And uh, as bad as it is for him to punt into the wind, the receivers are going to have to make the adjustment to the flutter ball. All we've seen now is knuckleballs. And an Hoffman and Rockman back deep. Hoffman scoops it up, dragged down immediately. LaSalle will take over at around their 46. Uh, tremendous field position. The key, the key is making sure on first down now that you get some positive yardage if you're an, ex an Explorers fan. Just beginning the second half of this city championship game, LaSalle's first chance to touch the ball. Lockery, as he comes out onto the field, certainly looking for much better than he played in the first two quarters. Yeah, and uh, it's not all his fault, too. He didn't get the help of some other people, and uh, guys just have to be concentrating a little bit more and uh, just somewhat more focus. Lockery under center. Signaling to his wide receivers and his running back. Donahue up the middle. Positive yardage for the Explorers, and they erupt on their sideline a great way to start their drive the first time they touch the football in this second half. Well, certainly a good start over the left side there, as you see. And here's a team that runs 150 yards a game, minus 22 in the first half. Forget about it. And a nice adjustment there by Donahoe as he got to the line of scrimmage, and he gets those eight yards. And here we are now. We have second and short. If anything, LaSalle showed he could not run away from GW. So why not run at the Eagles? And that carry by Rockman produces a first down. Yeah, right over top of DiGiacomo, 270 pounds, and the big guy, number 59, Hostrander, 220 pounds. That's power football. And maybe, Vince, that's the adjustment we were looking for. Maybe this is just what the Explorers needed. They danced around, they rolled out, they threw passes on the sides, they tried to bounce their backs out to the side. All of a sudden, on their first possession of the second half, they come right at the George Washington Eagles. Once again, Lockery and Felicia not on the same page. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's, just, it's just that quick screen out there. You try to get your uh, Connor Hoffman out for the lead block, but the pass just a little bit too far. But going back to your point, what it was, and I think, you know, at halftime, don't you think that if you're an offensive or a defensive, an offensive lineman here for LaSalle, you're feeling maybe a little manhandled? And don't you think that those coaches, you know those coaches, were appealing a little bit to their pride maybe? Mm. And, uh, and there they came right out and uh, just two smash mouth plays first down. But now you have second and long. This is what's been killing them. Lockery and Felicia, the dynamic duo, not able to hook up in a major way so far this afternoon. Rockman, Mr. Explosion himself, up the middle for five. And that will bring up a third and five for the Explorers. Yeah, the first time all day, Rockman's uh, had an opportunity to get loose and at least get beyond the line of scrimmage. You see the counter to the right. They're pulling the guard, a little bit of a delay. Rockman decides to take it up into the inside, uh, not following the lead of his big guy, number 74. But uh, they got a pretty decent, uh, pretty decent yardage on it. The Explorers can certainly use some points in their opening drive of the second half, trailing by two touchdowns in this city title game. Lockery on the roll. And time is running out. 
Yeah, once again, just good pursuit and nice coverage down downfield. I have to say that Lorenzo Adams got a hold, got away with a little bit of a hold. And uh, here you're going to see, you're going to see Drew Lockery. Just, it's a little bit of a waggle to the left. So he got 11 out there. He's going to either block or slip out. He's trying to get the ball to San Felicia, but uh, Felicia is tied up. You'll and see it. And there's our there. guy Fowler again. Yep, yep, just all over the field. Nothing there, as you can see. It's, it's blue on white the whole way. And all of a sudden, LaSalle lining up in a weird formation. They were back to punt. And it's Donahue under center. What the heck is going on? That was pretty weird. I thought I'd seen it all. Was he calling for the timeout? False start on LaSalle. It, it looked at one point like Donahue walked on to the George Washington line of scrimmage. Well, he crossed the George Washington line of scrimmage. TV timeout. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out, and so will they. <laughs> Much more coming up from this true city title game. George Washington leading 21-7. George Washington with plenty to cheer about. You know, Vince, we were explained to what happened just moments ago before the break. The Explorers actually took an intentional penalty so they could back themselves up and have more room to punt and, and not risk punting the ball into the end zone. Uh, <laughs> I guess that one backfired. <laughs> <laughs> And speaking of backfires, uh, I, I, was re I was reminded that uh, our guy Fowler is an East from East Tarsdale, not from Mayfair, none other than his dad. So uh, sorry about that, guys, and uh, for all those in that neighborhood. All we know is he's one tough hombre. And there he is, number 44. You'll see a lot of him this in that second half. Caught a big pass in the second quarter, right down the middle of the field. George Washington lined up, Aaron Wilmer under center. Elijah Douglas up the middle for just about a yard. Still going to try to go and pound it up inside. You know, he doesn't want to take any chances right now because the wind brisk in his face. And as Wilmer gets instructions from the sideline, you have to say with just under six and a half to play in the third quarter, if anything, this favors... George Washington. Oh, no Nothing's question. been accomplished in the second half, yeah. but yet they still lead by two touchdowns. You know, Keith, uh, exactly. You know, LaSalle did exactly what they wanted to do. They forced the punt. They got the ball. They ran the ball for a first down and then stalled. And then uh, here we are, back to there. And, and uh, you know, the period's half gone. For what appeared to be a very smooth-moving first half, we've had a, a lot of sloppy plays so far. Once again, another penalty here as George Washington was lining up. Backs the Eagles up five yards. Yeah, yeah now's a yeah. situation where I think Ron Cohen and uh, his offensive staff and his brain trust there might have to think twice. You know, you really do have that weapon in Fowler, and here he is coming wide. You see him lining up wide to the left, and we've got that slot. Let's see what they make him move. Everything's coming this way. Handoff up the middle. Lorenzo Adams. Get some of that yardage back, but still, it leaves the Eagles with what looks like third and seven. Yeah, a nice gain and a safe gain as he's working to the inside here on the left off tackle. Everybody's running deep and uh, <laughs> trying not to block anybody in the back. Good pursuit by LaSalle's defense. Now this is the third and long, and this is the big play. One guy whose name we haven't mentioned all day, number 86, checking in for the Eagles. Split out to the top of your screen, Joe Claiborne. A tall sophomore has been known to go up and get the ball, but it's not going to Claiborne, it's going to Fowler. And Fowler, once again, with another key play, keeps the George Washington drive alive. Yeah, just a really nice route by Fowler. He ran, it, he, he ran his route upfield like he was gonna run a deep route, and then he just pulled it to the sideline. And you'll see the looking to the left, and Fowler, you're just going through the screen. He makes his turn, and he comes back to the ball. That's the important thing. Looks the ball into his hands, 
and the first down. He, as a tight end, he says he doesn't mind mixing it up and, you know, banging around with guys every once in a while, but he does like splitting out every once in a while as a wide receiver. Fowler has seemingly made all the big plays when the Eagles have needed him to today. Wilmer, the handoff to Lorenzo Adams, up the middle, and now the Eagles are on the move. First down at midfield. Uh, here we go, you know, a little bit of that reverse. It's on the delay, and uh, you've got some, you really have to hold your blocks in this situation. Give this one right now to the offensive line for George Washington. They did a tremendous job of allowing him to get in through the line of scrimmage. And there it is. Nice cut right there. Good block up inside. Gets into the secondary and gets the first down on the 50-yard line. You know your offensive line is doing something when you haven't been touched until after you get beyond the first down marker. Thank you very much. Wilmer lined up under center to Adams again. This time he cuts the corner. Good for four yards. The Eagles continue to keep the ball on the ground here in this third quarter. And Lorenzo Adams, I'm sure, with more yards personally on the ground than LaSalle has as a team. And, and the key is now we're down to 420. It's, it's, it's possession. They're going against the wind. And they got a feel that nobody's going to be able to stop them. And here he is. Just good corner. possession. And, uh, good for and four yards. Four yards the on Eagles first down. And if I didn't know any better, Wilmer coming over to the sideline seemingly now each and every play, GW is being even more methodical. They know they have that two-touchdown lead, and they just want to keep this ball safe. They want to move it down the field. They want to get some more points. They want to put this game away as we prepare for third and short. Well, they're getting three, four, five yards of crack with a running play right now. Their offensive line is starting to dominate. You know, you got the big guys up front, 240, 240, 300, 215, you know, and they're clipping away. Now you got third and medium or third and four. And again, you're, you're chipping away at the clock with 3.30 to go here in the quarter. One of those big guys slow getting up off the field, but yet he is in three and a half remain in this third quarter. George Washington leading the city championship game on 6 ABC, 21 to 7. And here comes Wilmer again, and here comes Claiborne right behind him. Claiborne has not caught a pass today. You know what they call him on campus? They call him Joe Jesus because at times they say it looks like he walks on water. But he hasn't done a single thing today. Maybe that changes right here, right now. Wilmer, why spread the wealth? Do it yourself. But in this case, he can't do it himself. He comes up short, and so the Eagles appear to be in a situation where they may be forced to punt, but as the first half showed us, they're not scared to go for it on Yeah, down. may be forced to punt, but uh, I'm seeing Will McPhillan coming into the game, so they're going to punt. This was a true quarterback draw in the tapes that I've watched and the practices we've watched. Uh, they have this play in their arsenal, and uh, they ran everybody deep and thought they might catch them a little bit of sleep. Great defensive play there by LaSalle. Rockman back deep for LaSalle, along with Connor Hoffman. The Explorers could certainly use a big return here. And that is a nice punt by McPhillan. Touchdown by the Eagles. LaSalle will begin at their own 14 when we come back. Just over two minutes left in the third quarter. Washington leads this True City Championship game 21-7. Yeah, we were so explosive in the first part of the game and in the first quarter, and now this is a desperate situation for LaSalle, backed up way deep on what you call their minus 13. Lockery with a handoff to Donahue. He plows forward for a gain of four. A terrible rushing effort in the first half for the Explorers, minus 22 yards on the ground. They have come out attempting to run the football here in this third quarter, and they've been fairly successful. Yeah, but not successful enough on that first drive. They got two first downs. I mean, the first drive of the second half, and they got four yards here. Uh, but something's got to happen quick. The swing out to oh. Rockman. In and out of his hands. We've seen that all game long from the Explorers, you know, threats on offense. They seem to have a problem today grafting the ball, whether it's the wind, whether it's the cold, whether it's the nerves. They simply haven't held on all afternoon. Well, I like to say it's maybe concentration, too. Do you think maybe he took a little bit of a peek downfield? I mean, here's Drew Lockery. He's coming into this game with close to 2,400 yards in passing, 23 touchdown passes, and he just can't uncork one of or, or, or get rolling one of the most prolific passing offenses in the Catholic League. 
and it seems very frustrating for the Explorers on offense. GW managing to keep that explosive mm. offense in front all game long, but there, Lockery airs it out to Felicia. Like a kid who runs away from home, no intentions of coming back. And all of a sudden, the Explorers have made this a ball game. You know, that was just an amazing, tremendous play on both part by everybody, by the quarterback, by the receiver, Felicia, tremendous con concentration. That ball, as we know, is, is, uh, as uh, Walter was saying earlier, is just fluttering around, even if it's with the wind or against the wind. Now watch this, watch the tremendous, uh, we didn't get a chance to see his catch, but, but this is the run the afterwards. Speed, that's for but sure. we saw his speed, and here we are, Sam Felicia, 6'3", 210, baby. And that's his eighth touchdown of the year. It was a matter of time, and they're back in the ball game. We've been waiting for that dynamic duo to come to life. It just did. And now the Explorers have renewed energy, renewed faith, and a renewed belief that they can win this city title game. They have pulled within seven. Washington still in front, 21-14. I was watching Felicia the entire time. I thought they might just go to him, and he had single coverage on the inside. And actually what Sam had done, as you're looking at the uh, at all the guys in blue over there for LaSalle, I wonder why they're not wearing white, by the way, because last week they were all white. They were doing the white out. They should have, you know, you would have thought maybe they a little tradition there. But anyway, they're with the blue thing there. But uh, back to Felicia. Uh, he just did a nice job. He realized that his quarterback was in trouble. He gave him a tremendous target, and Lockery just rolled a little bit to his right, found it, Felicia, great catch, and races into the end zone for the touchdown. The LaSalle student body, as you mentioned, wearing all blue, but now the team is trying to reverse its fortunes. The Explorers have pulled within seven as we kick things off. Omar Hunter for the Eagles on the return. Up the middle, still running, bouncing it to the outside. Get off of me. Why are you on me? All the way to the 42. Boy, isn't that enough to just kill your momentum? Here you are, LaSalle. You're busted. You get that big touchdown. And what happens? You give up the big play and the kickoff return down to the 42-yard line. Just a tremendous, tremendous job by this kid. Look and break to the outside. He had that little bit of a burst like a Deshaun Jackson, and he just keeps fighting off, fighting off, fighting off. Guys, he's 180 pounds, 5'10", all hard. Running over the guy from LaSalle who wears the same number. Number five, Shane Brady, just got run over in the worst way, and now the Eagles have first and 10 at their own 42. Every time LaSalle has mounted a charge, the Eagles have answered. Can they do so once again? And now it's the Explorers defense. And now, Vince, we can feel it in this booth. The momentum is going back and forth. The energy is electric. Yeah, you can see it on the LaSalle sideline now. They're feeling it too. They're jumping around and they're not just jumping around trying to stay warm. Uh, and this is going to be a statement series for the LaSalle defense to try to dominate and control this offensive line of George Washington, get the ball back for their offense. Because now, now with that play that they just pulled, they're going to feel that they can do anything. Why do you imagine Aaron Wilmer has spent so much time, unlike the first half, checking in with his coaching staff in between plays? Just wanting to make sure there's no mistakes. It's as simple as that. I don't think it's about stealing signs. Wilmer, the handoff to Lorenzo Adams. Adams uh, fighting his way ahead. He looks to be a yard shy of a first down. That will bring up third and one. Yeah, just a really nice job by Lorenzo Adams. You know, he spun and fought, and as you see, he's going to be hit here by Kevin Farrington, captain of the team, and he keeps spinning. He gets those extra yards and comes up now with a third and short, third and one. As, uh, we're probably going to run out of time here in this quarter. As time ticks down at the end of the third quarter, it's the George Washington Eagles sharing handshakes, knowing they are one quarter away from a job well done. They lead LaSalle 21 to 14, the fourth quarter of the True City Championship coming up right here on 6 ABC. Welcome back to Northeast High, 12 minutes of play in the third quarter, produced one strike, one score. Drew Lockery, 81 yards to Sam Felicia, and now LaSalle is within seven, a game they have trailed all game long. George Washington, third and one. Wilmer with the handoff. Omar Hunter, that is not going to cut it. Not here, no way, no how. That's a momentum change here. You would wonder, wonder, wonder why you wouldn't go inside. The quarterback sneak has been fairly effective, and as you see, they're trying to come with his counter to the outside, but that's not happening. 
just everybody staying home making the play, and uh, now you're forced to punt. Kevin Forster for LaSalle, not fooled at all on that play. And now LaSalle in position to get its hands on the ball again. The last time they had the ball, Felicia and Lockery combined on the same type of magic they've enjoyed all season. Can it happen again? A great punt and a great roll for the GW Eagles. The LaSalle Explorers, if they are going to tie this game on this drive, it looks like they will have to go 94 yards. Yeah, you know, uh, special teams can be the difference, and here was a great situation there with McPhillan getting that punt and uh, Connor Hoffman uh, just choosing to let the thing drop instead of coming up to field it, and uh, now the offense backed up against the wind. 95 yards to go for the tying touchdown. Against the win, with the win, in your opinion, would you go right back up top to Felicia after the success they had on their last drive? Well, they have such an effective short passing game, you know, with Donahoe. Uh, if I were to do any kind of passing, I'd try to slip him out into the slot. And there is Donahoe. He didn't slip out by way of a reception. He slipped out with a handoff. Good enough for a first down. Yeah, that was good enough. You know, that's probably the biggest run they've had so far today, about 13 yards. But anyway, he's their playmaker. He's the guy that makes it happen, whether it's on the run. He makes a nice cut to the outside there, breaks the tackle, gets good blocking downfield by Connor Hoffman, and gets the other yardage. Looking at it again, you see the big block inside by number 74. And then Hoffman downfield, and he gets that extra yardage. And while we certainly won't call the Explorers a running powerhouse in this game, they do have 30 yards rushing in the second half compared to minus 22 in the first half. That short handoff, good for one yard, brings up second and nine. Yeah, what's really good, too, for LaSalle is they're not in the shadows of the goal line anymore. You know, if you're seeing the shadows, they were, they were huddling up in the shadow of the goal post for that last play before that. And now they're back out to the 22-yard line. They've got a little breathing room and just a big, big play by Donahoe. 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 Sorry about that. Donahoe what? Donahoe. Ten and a half left in this game. George Washington scoreless in that third quarter. It's been all us out all the time in the second half. But that play not going anywhere thanks to Lorenzo Adams. Yeah, that's that slip. Uh, slip. <laughs> Say that again, Vince. Slip quick screen to the left side you've got your two wide receivers out there you have uh, Hoffman and you have Felicia Hoffman really smart on that play he had an opportunity to make a block he could have gotten a clip and he stayed away from it but just tremendous pursuit there by the list by the uh, uh, George Washington D and that uh, sort of snuffed that play now you got that third and long so far it's been a steady diet of Donahue just a drive ago the Explorers went up top to Felicia and now they face third and 13. And press coverage on the left side, and there you go. There's five yards given right back to him. Like the third time today, yeah, uh -huh. the George Washington Eagles have been over anxious at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and it could be a nice little, uh, nice little play by the quarterback, by Lockery. Five yard penalty. Wine, Mouse. Wine. Wine. What, red or white's he want? <laughs> Come on, guys. The game isn't over yet. You asked him, you asked <laughs> he must he, think he's on a set of Invincible. <laughs> <laughs> Does he want Chardonnay? <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, let's take a look at this coverage. We have press at the bottom against Hoffman, and we have press at the top and with a trips formation. This ought to be interesting. Third and eight. Lockery under center. Straight drop back. And Lockery's in trouble, and Lockery is be being taken down one more time. Yes, he was, and nothing downfield. I wasn't looking so much at, at Lockery and the, and, and the blocking that he had there. I was looking downfield to see what was going on with his receivers. Those three receivers on that right-hand side weren't making anything happen, and um, it looks like it was James Fowler coming in there and, and making the big play, or number 42. Martin Haynes, Martin Haynes and Bryant Davis with a case of double trouble for Lockery. All right, we have a flag now in the secondary. I heard that one too. Eight and a half left to play in your true city championship. Fraction on the defense. George Washington leading LaSalle 21 to 14. 
We are back in business. Fourth down. LaSalle lined up to punt. Seemingly, as has been the case all day, with this win, a punt where the ball rolls to a dead stop, GW will take over at its own 39-yard line. Yeah, that's a tremendous job on the part of the punter to get the ball out that far. You know, he could get the spiral. McPhillan's the only one that I've seen kick a spiral so far today against the wind, and he put the ball down inside the 10-yard line. But now here we have the critical situation. This is a matter of you have 8.16 to go. You know, LaSalle needs to get that ball in decent field position. They're going against the wind, and uh, this is going to be right now uh, the battle of the trenches. Who's going to control the offensive line? And that's where everybody wants to look. LaSalle with only two losses on the season. The GW Eagles with only one. That was to Central Bucks East. The Eagles rolling off seven straight wins to get here. They don't know what it's like to lose, and they've been playing like that from the very start. Aaron Wilmer back to pass. He will air one out. And it falls well short. That was, that was definitely interesting, Vince, when you think the Eagles are holding on to the lead. They've been pretty good on the ground today and they decided to put one up for grabs right now. Yeah, you see Wilmer, he rolls out to his right. He's trying to get downfield on a, with Omar Hunter just running out. Watch Wilmer roll into his right, but there's too much pressure, and now he's on his back, and he couldn't step into it. And uh, I, I'm not sure that Hunter would have gotten there anyway because he was pretty well covered, as you can see. The two did hook up for a nice touchdown reception. Omar Hunter with the reception early in this game for the Eagles. Look and now they're that. back to what they do best, plowing forward and making it a third and short. That is just great heart on the part of Omar Hunter. We said before, only 180 pounds, but uh, he's just piling in there like he's a 220 pounder. And he definitely had some help. And he certainly did have some help. Good, look at two big guys downfield. I mean, it's just, just monsters. Sharif Floyd, who else? So the 300 Floyd. pounder is down there making things happen 10 yards downfield. Sharif Floyd, who once again is getting a lot of interest from colleges, but has should. not been able to finance his trip to the combine that's coming up. So the school is holding a fundraiser for him tomorrow. And George Washington converts on third down. Hunter, once again, right up the gut. The clock. We'll keep moving. The chains will keep moving. A tremendous game for Omar Hunter. There it is, a quick count, gone off the left guard. Somebody getting a hand on him, and he had the presence to hang on to the ball, get that first down. And now they're in the plus territory. Anytime we're on the other side in the other team's territory, that's their plus territory. And they're moving. And the offensive line is taking control. And this is what we talked about. LaSalle calls itself the people's defense. It, it looks like there are a few people short on these last couple plays. Wilmer, nice ball fake. Cut in the corner. Lowering his shoulder. Aaron Wilmer out of bounds with another first down for the Eagles. Aaron Wilmer, just a nice fake to the inside. Everything's been successful to the inside. He's got a little bit of a keeper. They do have a little bit of an option offense. We looked at it when we were in practice this week. He decided to keep it himself. He got the big block on the outside. There it is, a fake to the inside. 32, nice block. And Wilmer, just to the outside, lowers his shoulder. I'm not running out of bounds. You kidding me? Number, first down. Number 21, Kevin Farrington, wanted no part of that collision. And Wilmer leads his troops back to the line of scrimmage. Just over six and a half to play in this true city title game. Lorenzo Adams up the middle, pushes forward for a gain of three. That will bring up second and seven. Just keeping it on the ground. 6.30 to go. And, they, and now here's the situation with the wind at your back. McPhillan, a pretty good field goal kicker. If they could get down to the 20-yard line, who knows? Who it's, knows? It seems like LaSalle has stayed true to its base defense. Yes. What do you do if you're the Explorers when the Eagles are content to just mash ahead, mash ahead, mash ahead to run this clock down? Well, you know, what you did at halftime, you got under their faces. You, you appealed to their pride, and they came out, and they did what they were asked to be doing. It has to be done. But now uh, they're getting handled again by this huge offensive line of George Washington, and this is the key. Wilmer. Play action, 
and all of a sudden he's in trouble. Oh. He is in major trouble. S spins out of it, fires, incomplete. Just a tremendous effort on the part of Wilmer to escape being pinned back there. That's the last thing, the absolute last thing they want. And, and as I thought, he's probably going to get called here for intentional grounding. There was no wide receiver anywhere to be seen. There wasn't a player anywhere to be seen <laughs> except except for our camera crew down there. <laughs> Wilmer had one thing on his mind. Get rid of the football. Do not take that big sack. But apparently, this is just as bad. Yeah, he lost his pouch too. Oh, what a bummer. You know, but this isn't the NFL. And, uh, and once you get outside that pocket, you know, uh, you can just get rid of that ball. So they're going to get him for intentional grounding. And that, that is really a killer. They were just moving the ball so well. I was surprised to see that they went with the, with the pass play there. But Intentional grounding. Loss of down on his snap. Oh, now you got third in the football field. Third and long. So what, what, what play do you have in your book for this one, Coach? <laughs> you, you have to believe Coach Ron Cohen will decide a conventional handoff. His team's in front by seven. Under six minutes to play, they cannot risk a turnover with the way LaSalle has come on strong in this second half. Oh, no question. I'd be surprised if they do anything long. Just keep it pretty short and conservative. Well, this is their bread and butter play to Hunter. the man. Finding some room, not enough to move the chains. And he that got, brings up fourth down. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, he got he got half of it back. Now, this is going to be an interesting call. You know, you, you have your good kicker there, and he's shown the ability to be able to put the ball. And he's certainly not going to field goal. All right, so McPhillan's coming in. And uh, certainly what you're going to try to do is put it inside. The, I thought he was coming in anyway. Oh, that way he's going back in. All right, come on, make up your mind, will you? <laughs> Coming in for LaSalle, back yeah, deep. And LaSalle's not quite sure what was going on either, you know. <laughs> you see, <laughs> seeing Hoffman. All right. Hoffman and Rockman. Rockman, the explosive one. He has not exploded today. So now Washington takes a delay a game. So, Vince, there must be something to that idea of backing yourself up so as not to put the ball in the uh, end zone. Yeah, I guess so. On the offense, still a fourth down. On the snap, on the snap. Uh, LaSalle tried that earlier with, with one of the craziest things I've ever seen. <laughs> with the penalty, just walked across the line of scrimmage. This was more conventional. McPhillan with the end over end punt. Rockman! <coughs> he coughed it up! But somehow, someway, the Explorers get their hands back on the football. Oh, man. You know, a, a, a situation might have been looking downfield. Let's talk about that and if he should have fielded it at all. Yet we get back. Rockman ill advised. A lucky break for the Explorers. Will their luck continue? Four and a half left. They're down seven. The conclusion of this ball game coming up. Welcome back, everybody. I'll tell you, in my years of experience of being around football for all these years, it's been my experience that in cold temperatures like this and games like this, the contact tends to peter off in the third and fourth quarter. I've got to tell you, that is not the case in this game. Judging from the sidelines here, the clack of the helmets and the kind of contact still going on, these two teams want it, and they want it bad. Four and a half left to play in this true city championship game. That's Donahue around the corner for a gain of what appears to be eight yards, Vince. Yeah, Donahue, uh, a very safe pass. He's just got tremendous hands, and uh, their, their backs catch the ball as well as their receivers. But going back to that fielded punt by Rockman, conventional wisdom, you don't take that, you don't take that punt inside the 10-yard line. And uh, he was backed up on about the, five, on about the seven. Uh, you know, you would think that the ball would roll in, give him a little field position, but here we have trips left. Donahue has carried the load for the Explorers in this second half, and he's doing so once again. He extends the chains first and 10 for LaSalle. All right, now you don't want to get too conservative here if you're George Washington's defense, 
They've been playing tough up front the entire time. They've been playing press coverage. And uh, let's see if Keita Crispina with his uh, defensive scheme will continue to do that. They're pressing now. Just over four minutes left. And it's Donahue again. Every play right now being run for Donahue. That must signal that if the Explorers feel they can depend on someone in this game, it's Donahue. Yeah, Donahue, he had 31 receptions coming into the game. Uh, he's got several today. They put him out there in that slot, get that quick screen, and you're going to see it coming up right now. There he is. We got the block coming out on the outside by number 10 and trying to spring. That's Steve Jones, the tight end, just trying to do that kickout block. And then Donahue just comes in right underneath of it, but uh, pretty good defense. The Explorers begin the second half with little to no life. They have chipped away and chipped away and chipped away some more. Second and five, Lockery going up top to Felicia, just out of his reach. Just, just couldn't do it. And, and he ran what we call the Utah pattern. Uh, it, it's, a, it's, he was in the slot formation, and that's Felicia. Got one-on-one -on -one coverage. He's running that post corner. Little stutter step to the inside. Make the, the defender think you're going to the post. Break it to the outside. But um, Lockery just couldn't get the ball to him. He was there. Big third and five for Lockery. There it is. See that little, the little step to the inside, moving to the outside. Just a little bit too short. And this is a huge third down, third and five, three and a half minutes left. If the Explorers cannot convert, you have to wonder if they will get their hands on the ball again this afternoon. Lockery feeling the pressure over the middle. Ruled incomplete. The pass too high for his receiver, ruled incomplete, and that brings up fourth and five. Yeah, I'm not sure whether he's trying to get it to, Trent, uh, to, to uh, Steve Jones, and that's his tight end. A big target, he's six feet four. But um, it's just too much pressure on Lockery to see anything downfield. And now it is truly danger time for LaSalle. We creep inside three and a half minutes. They trail by seven, punting the ball away. George Washington, no doubt, has plans of keeping that ball on the ground. Oh, and it's blocked. And the kick is blocked. Sharif Floyd. Sharif Floyd. We have said that name all day. Number 73, the big man making big plays in the biggest moment of his career. I'm telling you, that was just such a heads up play. And, and, and instead of just running and charging at the punter, I'm not quite sure what Lockery was thinking here. I mean, the Donahue. Uh, I, I just don't know what was going on in his head at that particular point, whether he was thinking about running. But whatever he did, uh, it wasn't the right thought. And at this, right now, the biggest play of the game, because now, now, this looks like it, well, this is going to become a two-possession game with 3.16 to go in the game. Welcome back to Northeast High School. Moments ago, the play of the game, Sharif Floyd, coming out of nowhere. It looked like Donahue double-clutched, Vince. Yeah, he did double clutch, you know, and, and he wasn't getting much help there by uh, Kevin Farrington. But, you know, you have Kevin Farrington, 177 pounds, who's trying to block a 300-pounder just charging in there. So uh, <laughs> you got the free kick. I just was just beside myself that that happened right now, and they're going to have to give up this ball. They're working on the onside all practice long, but I don't think in this situation they thought they would be using it. Punt goes out of bounds. <laughs> Or the free kick, I should say, goes out of bounds. Sharif Floyd, we've talked about him all game. Two sacks, he's opened up monster holes in the running game. And moments ago, with the block punt that gave the Eagles two more points and put them nine points up on the sow, he has done anything and everything his team yeah, has asked. Yeah, he's absolutely, as far as I'm concerned, the most valuable player on this field. Without a doubt, without a doubt. But that was interesting strategy there on the part of Drew Gordon because, you know, they have the option of having the free kick. It could have been the punt. And rather than punt downfield and try to pin uh, George Washington back a little bit, they decide to go with, uh, I think, a minimal percentage play and that onside kick. And there you go. You know, they got the ball on the plus 33-yard line. And uh, with the wind at their back and a uh, little clock left. And George Washington monstrous on the ground this afternoon. The pitch play goes to Omar Hunter. That's good for three yards. Just over three minutes left. George Washington forcing LaSalle to use a timeout. George Washington came in, Vince, as heavy underdogs. They believe they had a shot, and their belief is what appears to have carried them to this lead at this juncture on the ball. Well, talking to Ron Cohen, 
at practice out this week. He said it basically was all about respect, you know, and, and he said to that, that to Walter after the first, the first half. And, and y you know, what do we have to do? I've, I've won 10 city titles, you know. I mean, what do I have to do? I've got the pedigree, and uh, we're walking on this field, and everybody thinks that we're going to get our butts kicked. And here they are, you know, taking control early in the game. And certainly they have the hammer. They've got a two-possession game working. They're causing the sale now to make all kinds of adjustments, taking their timeouts. Uh, you know, can they do it? They're going to be going against the win. Uh, if anything, this certainly is in the favor of George Washington. Ron Cohen, definitely a fixture at GW, also a fixture in the public league school system. It was Ron Cohen who came up with the idea of the super sites, the That's fields right. that you see around mm -hmm. the city for other schools that don't have facilities. The fields located in the Northeast, in Germantown, in North Philadelphia, and South Philadelphia. That was his brain power, and this is his game plan being put to perfection by his George Washington Eagles. Yeah, and he's one first down away for another one of his titles, number 11, and that would be uh, breaking the tie that he has with Al Angelo from Frankfurt. But uh, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, you know, because now we have a third and long situation, and uh, both teams going back to their respective benches and getting whatever instructions they're getting. You know that uh, if, I'm, if I'm George Washington, you're going to continue with the running game as you have right here, whether it's going to go or not, because George GW's uh, – already forced uh, LaSalle to use two of their timeouts here just to, to save the clock with three minutes to go. And if you're telling the GW would-be ball carriers two words if you're one of the Eagles coaches, with three minutes left, holding on to a nine-point lead, those two words would be? <laughs> Cover the ball. How about another one? Fall into a fetal position. <laughs> like remember back in the day when you would recover a fumble and then you would just wrap over top you of it? Wrap your yeah. body right around I'm it. I'm telling you. You know, right now the <laughs> clock is their friend and the wind. The clock is definitely not the Explorers' friend. They need to come back and fast. A game where they have simply been outplayed, out-executed. The handoff to Hunter. Oh. Looked like he had a seam tripped up at the very end. Oh, just a tremendous play there by uh, Shane Brady. He just really saved a big, big play because that was going to bust big. Everything was there. They liked that little counter coming around to the left-hand side. And watch it. He's coming from your right to your left on your screen. Everything is set up. Guy's going deep. He's coming around. He's coming around, getting the good block, and he's got it. And there's Hunter. He just trips him up. He breaks to the outside, baby. He might be going into the end zone. Tremendous play on the part of Shane As Hunter. As opposed to the previous punt by LaSalle. Yeah, LaSalle's not buying it. Right now they have nobody deep. So are, are they going to let McPhillan just uh, kick it down and bounce around? We'll see. Or do you put everyone in man pursuit of McPhillan and, and try to reciprocate that punt block. I, I don't know if I take that gamble, but uh, there they go. They're going to try to get that more position again, uh, running the clock down to 255. On the snap, on the snap, delay a game. All right, so now LaSalle is going to drop their two big guns deep. You got Hoffman and Rockman. Let's see if Rockman. <laughs> It, see, his, his, his heels are on the 10-yard line. You see that down there, Keith? Yep. If he has to move backwards, he shouldn't field that ball. Well, he doesn't have to worry about it now. Oh! Oh, off someone's head. Off the head of a member of the George Washington Eagles. Clunk. Not what they had in mind. Nearly touched down at the one. Instead, it's a touchback. Yeah, now Waverly Harris, it hit Waverly Harris's head. <laughs> on about the 25-yard line, but uh, there had to be awareness on the part of any, somebody from George Washington to stop that ball from rolling into the end zone. Oh, it's going to it's going to be dead. A legal yeah, touching. Okay. All right. We've seen a couple things today, Vince, haven't that we, we haven't seen before. I hear this boink. <laughs> <laughs> Glad it wasn't a seagull. <laughs> what he calls his boys tonight. Yeah, man, I saw that ball bounce off your head. I saw you out there. Now, All right, to LaSalle the seeing its way down the field. Steve Jones, the big reception. The big target, too. 6'4", 210-pound junior. But here's the real number. Two and a half minutes left. 23-14, Washington in front of LaSalle. And Lockery drops back again. 
He fires, and that's a short hop. That's incomplete. Yeah, that ball just a little bit low. Tremendous route there by Sam Felicia. But uh, as he's coming back for the ball, it was just skipping off the ground. So uh, I don't think even if he had a chance to hang on to it, it would have been a completion. You see frustration starting to set in on the Explorers. They have had a great season. They right. ended the preps 55 game regular season league winning streak. Mm -hmm. They beat West Catholic. They've done everything and anything, beating Father Judge in the title game to get here. But they have been overwhelmed today by the Eagles. And they think they're the cream of the crop in the Catholic League for years to come. Lockery in oh. trouble again. Incomplete. He's been under pressure all game long. Yeah, this time it was Vernon Dupree that came in from his safety position. It was a little bit of a delayed blitz and uh, just unable to, um, Lockery unable to get any kind of footing or get any, any kind of oomph on the ball trying to get the ball to Connor Hoffman. But here we go. <laughs> and you see two men around Sharif Floyd. Yeah. Two men now around Sharif Floyd. That's how much of an impact player he's been in this ball game. You, you, you got to love the call, you know. But you have a blitz. You got Dupree right there now in the middle. And he's coming again. And so are the Eagles. But the pass is complete. Now they'll spot it where he caught the ball. Very good spot. Connor Hoffman. You did a tremendous job. Two things you did very well. You caught the ball with your hands, and you came back to the ball and gave a good target to your quarterback. Hurry up, offense. Lockery needs to work fast. Time is running out on LaSalle, and it's dreams of completing its championship season. That pass to Jones, incomplete. Yeah, it won't hurt him too much anyway because they're going to be in four-down territory, and uh, it would have kept the clock running, uh, trying to get Jones on that, what we call the six pattern or the crossing pattern, uh, just a little bit too far out of his reach. LaSalle High School, the Catholic League champs. GW, the Public League champs. This game has been played mostly with GW in front. From the start, they jumped on the Explorers. The Explorers scored the only touchdown in the third quarter. Two minutes left. They trail by nine. They need a comeback. Lockery under pressure, airing it out. Just too much on that throw. Yeah, it was interesting because I was watching Hoffman in that route. He was double covered deep, and uh, he came up a little bit short, and I don't think he realized that the ball was going to be thrown deep, and it was a heck of a throw by Lockery into the win. He got it down there about 45 yards, but uh, it was too difficult for Connor Hoffman to stop and then start up again and get up under that, underneath that ball. So now we got that third and 10. <laughs> I mean, you talk about huge plays. These are the two biggest plays of the season for LaSalle. And Lockery has come up big all season when under pressure. Can he do so one more time? Lined up under center, he drops back. He fires, complete to Felicia. And now it depends on the spot. Oh, well, you know what? And I'm telling you, it's a critical spot. I'm sure they're going to have to measure this. You know, uh, the, the wide receiver, Sam Felicia, big target, 210, 200, 210 pounds, 6'3", uh, as you see there. Now, as it looks like they're right simply there. giving him the first down, Vince. All right, we have him isolated. He did exactly what he's supposed to do. He came back to the ball, but by doing that, he might have taken, and it is a first down. All right. And now, Lockery goes to the other side, dropped by Donahue, might not be a bad thing. He looked like he was about to be tackled in bounds with just over a minute and a half left and the Explorers down nine. Yeah, that would have burned a lot of time. Hoffman, they've been using him a lot on that slip pass, getting him out into the flat. They run everybody out and they try to clear through that area. Um, at this point though, I think you gotta move the field, the ball downfield. Uh, those little two or three yard passes right now are pretty tricky. The Explorers could sorely use a quick strike touchdown like the one they had in the third quarter from Lockery to Felicia to bring themselves within striking distance of the Eagles. That pass is complete. Will McKinney, we haven't called that name all day. Yeah, how about that? Nice job for Will. You know, he just sort of drops in there out of his uh, backfield position. Third and short. Certainly not going to run it here, I don't think. McKinney, one of 10 seniors on the LaSalle roster. That pass. This could be his final game. Felicia, again, this one right on the number seven and bounces down to the field. Just 
Not his day today. Uh, tried to trap it up against his body. Uh, you can't blame this on the wind. You can't blame it on the pass. You gotta get control of the ball first. If it means stop running, stop running. But uh, he just ran right through the ball. With the exception of that 81 yard touchdown catch in the third quarter. Felicia will not mark this down as one of the best games of his career, nor will Lockery, but together they still have time left, just over a minute. The straight handoff to McKinney, plowing forward. All right, now set up. a minute left, yeah, yeah, just, a handoff, Vince. Well, you know what, the, the clock is gonna stop right now because of the change, because, right because of the change here. moving forward, and he's already got his play caught in the huddle. You know, I mean, really bright guys. And all set, they only lost a couple seconds there. Oh! And now they just lost some more time. Martin Haynes dropping it like it's hot. And dropping Lockery like he's not. <laughs> Coming off his right defensive end position, it's all pressure. I mean, just pin your ears back right now if you're on that defensive line. Just over a half a minute remaining. You can see from our vantage point, the Eagles sideline. Players congratulating each other. The fans jumping up and down. I even see one player acting like he's an Eagle himself, <laughs> spreading his wings. Truly a day that this school can celebrate. They came out, no one had expectations for them. They came in with their game plan. They believed in themselves. And now they're close to making believers out of everyone. Well, we got a penalty here. I did, didn't get an explanation on it. And, uh, yeah, they're believing they can fly. Uh, I, I, I played in the Miracle of the Meadowlands, but I don't think there's going to be any miracles now. There's just uh, two yeah, scores yeah, in 33 yeah, yeah, yeah. seconds. It's going to be very tough. You were there when Herm Edwards scooped up the ball. And the party was at my house, and we went all <laughs> night long. <laughs> here the party will be for George Washington, apparently. That pass is picked off. Lorenzo Adams saying, throw it if you want, cuz I'll get it before your man does. And that should do it. The third time in this game, Lockery has been intercepted by the Eagles. Well, Coach Gordon said going into the game that wind was certainly a factor, knocked this ball down. Can't take away from the great athletic effort of Gordon right there. And uh, he jumps and he catches the ball at its highest point. Beautiful job. And that's going to seal it and you can feel it. That will seal it, and you can feel it. The Eagles know this game is theirs. Congratulations for everyone. LaSalle was more highly touted. And not taking anything away from anybody. You know, this, this game was all about passion, enthusiasm, pride. As we know, and we talked to the kids all week about being part of something special. Let me tell you something, no matter what, you're a winner when you walk off this field. And I hope these LaSalle players know that. Uh, the victory, a well-deserved win here for George Washington. The Eagles pulling one out, number 11 for the coach. And, and Vince, as time ticks down, as the George Washington Eagles wrap up this championship, what a great display of sportsmanship on a great day for all of us in this.